QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Tax Line Mapping Overview. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in a QuickBooks practice file. In a future presentation, we will set up another practice file from scratch that we can use to practice setting up the tax mapping features and see how to use them. But for now, we want to give an overview of what the process will be, what it is to have the tax mapping, and how it might fit in or work best in a workflow both for the bookkeeping process and the tax preparation process. So we do have the open win windows open at this point. You can go to the view dropdown, open windows in order to do that. We're now gonna go to the chart of accounts by going to the lists dropdown, chart of accounts. This chart of accounts is what's gonna be used to be building the balance sheet and income statement, which are the major tools that will typically be used in order to generate the, the tax return, whether that be for a sole proprietorship schedule C return, or something, a corporation like a, or a limited liability company or a S corporation or a partnership, same kind of, of, of process here. We'd have the chart of accounts. Those would be used to make the financial statements, financial statements generally used to, as the building blocks or starting point to do the data input for the tax preparation. Now, when you get this chart of accounts, most people will set up the chart of accounts based on the industry that they have told QuickBooks that they are in and the type of entity they are, whether that be sole proprietorships, S corporation, partnership, and so on and so forth. And that chart of account will already be set up and have both the account types be set up and it'll also have the, um, the tax mapping type set up as well. So in other words, even if you haven't been working with the tax mapping feature, you've just kind of been ignoring that, you probably have a substantial amount of accounts, at least the ones that came when you started the company file, that are already mapped out because they were mapped out as a default setting when they were set up by QuickBooks when the company file was started. So let's take a look at that mapping here. If I, if I go to account, you can either right click on it and edit, or you can go onto the rise up and edit the account. And then we have the name up top. Now this is where it's gonna be mapped on the financial statements as an expense on the income statement in this case, the name, sub account, description, and then down here below, this is the tax mapping line. Now most people basically ignore this line and it's probably okay most of the time that this line is being ignored, but this is mapping it if you were to import this information from the QuickBooks to the tax software, this is the line that would help you do that. Now, now I say that normally many people don't actually like pay much attention to this line and normally it probably doesn't really matter because many when you, when you do the tax preparation process, unless you have software that you're using and you're using a system that will be, will be utilizing this mapping system, then it's not gonna be really relevant. And so, but if you have a system set up where you're working with tax software where you can import this in and you have a system set up that you know how to do it well, <laughs> then it can save time on the data input. So this is something, in my opinion, in, in my experience, I've, I've see, worked at many different or multiple, at least uh, tax preparation places, CPA firms and whatnot. I've never seen this really being utilized really effectively, but I think it, it's always been something that's had potential to be utilized really effectively. And if you set up the proper system for it, at least for some clients, uh, or, or maybe yourself, right? If you're doing this, you, then you can basically set up a system that could be uh, beneficial and save time to do. So how would that system look like? Well, uh, typically you, in order to make this work, you need to be able to import it to the tax software. So then you would probably want to start with a tax software. The easiest way to, to make sure that that would be applicable is start off with a tax software or work with an accounting firm that is using a tax software. If you're the bookkeeper and you're lining this up with a, with a tax preparation you know get acquainted with and uh do the do the networking with with tax preparation places that utilize software that's owned by intuit and then you might be able to convince them or work with them to do this to set up this process which could save both people basically time so the large software that's owned by intuit is called lacert so lacert is a is a tax software it's a very good tax software it's a fairly expensive tax software uh, therefore, that is owned by Intuit, and it does allow you to import the data from QuickBooks to Lacert. So that means that the mapping that would be showed up there would be would flow through to the Lacert program. They also earn, own TurboTax, which is something that's going to be a, a, a cheaper software that's used for individual tax filing. So if you're just doing your own taxes, then you might be able to map it to the TurboTax. I haven't looked into that in depth. Maybe I'll look into that in the future, but 
you might be able to link it there because again they're owned by the same company so that could be another system that you can use we'll be testing it out here with the uh, LeCert program and importing the data into the LeCert program now if you have a small uh, company such as a, a um, like a Schedule C type of company and it's not a very uh, detailed Schedule C I think that's where the data input could be easier to do because then you can map this thing out and import the information for a fairly small uh, small tax return and be able to make the adjustments if you have a larger tax return like an S corporation or an LLC or, uh, or something like that then it can be a little bit more detailed because you probably have more tax adjustments that you need to do like M1 adjustments and Schedule K adjustments and whatnot and those can be a little bit more complicated to map and that's why a lot of times like external software I still like just doing it in Excel because you can see that uh, you could see it very very clearly in Excel so let me just look at the the process normally what would happen in in the tax preparation process is you would you would take your financial statements or you take your information from QuickBooks provide it to the CPA or do it yourself uh, at the end of the year and then typically take your your trial balance and put it into some software such as Excel so I'll take my my trial balance as of the end of the year and put it into like Excel typically and and work with a worksheet that would look basically like this I'm gonna hide some cells hide some cells where we'd have the unadjust like if I got this from a client I'd have the unadjusted trial balance then I'd make any adjustments we need to make to it to make what I feel the, the books to be correct as of as of at this point in time now again you may not need to do that if and you may do any adjustments if you're doing it yourself in the actual software so you may not have any period in adjustments so you might not need to adjust the books in, in order to do that if you do adjust the books if, if you're working in an accounting firm you may you may still like to do it in an excel sheet I still like to do it in an excel sheet so I can see the, the journal entries I think this is the most transparent way uh, to see these items although you can do this as well in the tax software I, I would do it outside and then I would get plug that information into the tax software so that then the tax data is lined up exactly for for it's correct on a book basis in other words and then once you have it once you have it set up in QuickBooks that it's up to date on a book basis I'm going to unhide these cells the other half of this worksheet I'm going to hide these cells would be the tax adjustments any adjustments you have to make from the book uh, items to get to the tax items now if you're just doing a schedule C like a small company file then there probably aren't many adjustments down here you have to do all you really need is the income statement to upload and that's why I think it works it could work quite well to just link the thing up and save you some data input with regards to a small Schedule C item but if it's a larger company file and if it's like an S corporation or something like that you might have a lot more adjustments that you need to do that are going to be differentiations between the tax and the book for example like depreciation is often different between the tax and the books and whatnot uh, you know meals if you have meals you have to do the 50 percent thing and whatnot so so you might have some of these adjustments that you're going to be that you're going to be putting into place now you can do that in the LACERT tax software once you upload it but it's just not as as easy to work with in the LACERT to, to go back and forth and enter it in the LACERT tax software so what I would do then is then is then do the adjustments in in uh, Excel here still do my normal process then import it to to LACERT import the the trial balance that was the adjusted trial balance the book numbers and then make my adjustments any adjustments that I need to to still be putting into place to line up so I so I then I can line it up I can use my my worksheet here as a double check and then it could save me time and in data inputting in other words I would data input the adjusted numbers here and then work it out in in Excel and just double check it and, and see if I can then enter those adjustments into the system so let's let's just check it out in LACERT if I went over to LACERT here now this is, so here we are in the tax software this is for an S corporation uh, it might be easier to do for it for a sole proprietorship and we'll take a look at an example of that but for now let's just think about a system where a bit more complex return like an S corporation type of return we have this trial balance area which is where you would then do the importing so you can import to this trial balance section which looks like this and then you can kind of map this back to the data input points on the tax return so if you can get all the stuff into this trial balance just uploaded properly and mapped to the correct data input it could save a lot of time in the data input the problem is doing the adjustments from from this screen 
uh, how many adjustments do you do and how complex is that going to be? And I don't think it's quite as easy to do adjustments here as it would be in say an, an Excel software. So that's why I, so here's what it looks like. You can import it here. You can hit the drop down, and we can import the QuickBooks file or an Excel file. So you might think, why don't I just export it to Excel, make any adjustments and then import it here. You can't, you can't really do that as, as easily because when it comes from Excel, you don't have the mapping, you don't have the tax mapping. That's the whole point. So we want to import it directly here from QuickBooks which is why I would then export it to Excel and do any kind of adjustments that I want to do for the book side of things. Make sure to enter those adjustments into the QuickBooks file so the QuickBooks file is correct as of that point in time, then import it directly from the QuickBooks file when the book numbers are completely correct, and then we just deal with any kind of tax adjustments we, we need to make uh, within, within LACERT, which we can then double check to, the, the quick, to our Excel file if we so choose, if we, if we need that double checking. You might not need that double checking if you're doing like a, um, a small a small return or if, you, if you're comfortable working within this trial balance. The reason I like working into Excel because it's just more comfortable for me <laughs> to make adjustments over there. It's easier to do in my opinion. So uh, on this side, then we have the account, we have the type, we have the prior period. If, if we had the prior period, we have the unadjusted books, the adjustments and the adjusted books and then the tax adjustments. You'll note that this worksheet looks a lot like our worksheet here. If I unhide the columns, we have the unadjusted trial balance, adjustments, adjusted trial balance. Now, you'd only need these three columns if you needed to make adjustments to the numbers that were in QuickBooks. And if you don't, then you, like, you don't need these columns, right? You can just import it directly from QuickBooks and then, then just worry about the tax adjustments. So if you need to make these adjustments, I would recommend making them in QuickBooks or doing them in Excel and then entering the journal entries into QuickBooks so that your book numbers are correct. Then I can hide these columns, say I'm not worried about these columns. And then when I go back over to uh, LACERT, I would, I would do the same thing. And note these numbers aren't exactly the same as on the Excel worksheet, just, just, just an example here. So I can edit the columns down here, column options. I can go to the show columns. And then I can say, I don't really need to see the, the prior year tax. I don't need the unadjusted items or the debits and credits related to them. I'm going to say, okay. And so now I have the type, the book, and then just the tax adjustments that I, that I need to be making. So everything I would like at this point, when I import it from QuickBooks to be correct on a book basis. And if it's not, I just, I adjust QuickBooks, not the tax software. And then I would import it from QuickBooks to here. And then any adjustments we need to make for the tax side of things, we would make here in essence, working on this side of the, of our, of our worksheet, just doing tax adjustments. Now, if you have a small schedule C type of return, you might not have too many tax adjustments easy. You just, you just do your, do your process and uh, go forward. If you have more tax adjustments, then some of these line items will kind of map itself because they'll be able to determine what type of adjustments you need based on the information that would be data input. I would like, I like double checking it if it's a complex return in, uh, in, in Excel so I can figure out what's happening because oftentimes you won't be in balance because it'll, something will be missing. So I still need to do it over here, but then it can save a lot of just the data input to, to get this information in directly directly in there and then make the adjustments you need now you can do the then journal entries if you need to enter journal entries here or tax journal entries in our case at this point you can also go to this tab which is the important tab that's assigning the line items to the tax return so these are all mapping then to the tax return and they're all look how nicely they all map out and the red ones are not mapping out and they map out because of the data input that got that got taken directly from uh, QuickBooks. And if anything is not mapping out, then you can go to this item here and it gives you like a screen on where to where it should go. And then you can find it and, and put it into that screen. So it's saved. This is where it saves time in, in this data input. Now, I don't think a lot of times the mapping will not completely be there, you know, and sometimes you're going to have some adjustments if it's more complex return that you'll have to still make but you won't have to do all that initial data input. That's where the time can basically be saved. For example, this one doesn't really map out clearly because it's a distribution. But in any case, then once this is input, if you take a look at LACERT, like I open the data input here and I go to the deductions, the deductions are input and they're black. And that means that they got input if they were blue, if like if I enter something like here, it's blue. That means I did the input. If it's black, it means it, it took it from somewhere in this case it took it from 
the data input that we imported directly from QuickBooks. So all this stuff is stuff that just came directly from QuickBooks and it just worked out the, the entire thing, which that could save a lot, of, uh, a lot of time. Obviously, the problem is when these things don't line up, when something doesn't line up, then you still got to kind of figure out what didn't pull over correctly or what kind of adjustments need to be made. If it's an S corporation, it's usually the M1 adjustments and the Schedule K adjustments that become difficult. So here on this one, it's a Schedule K. So the things that I, I still had to kind of go in, and these actually pulled in, these Schedule K adjustments pulled in nicely. And, uh, and then we had the, uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I entered one that didn't have a whole lot of M1 adjustments. So we might test it a little bit more thoroughly, but it ties out here. And the only thing I basically had to do was, was reassign a couple line items that weren't pulling over properly. And then I had to do the distributions uh, to the to the shareholders and everything, everything else pulled over pretty good. So basically the bottom line is that if you have a, if you have a system where you're a bookkeeper and you work with an accounting firm that uses LACERT or some tax software that allows you to import from QuickBooks to the LACERT system, they may have a system in place where they're utilizing that import feature, which can be useful, uh, or, or you might convince them to do that, you know, because it, they, you know, they might be able to pick something up that'll be easier uh, to do that. If they're, if they're using LACERT, they may not be importing from, from QuickBooks. And if you have certain types of returns and you're like, you know, I, I can help you out and make this a little bit easier. It might be worth working with a CPA firm to do that. If you have TurboTax, you may be able to import your own data there. I think the best system to do personally is to make any adjustments you need to be making in the QuickBooks file. Uh, whether again, whether that's done by an outside CPA firm with other software, and then you enter the data into QuickBooks. So your books are correct in QuickBooks on a book basis, then export the data. And then and then you can make any adjustments that need to be made. So let's, and we'll take a look at that in a bit more detail in future presentations.